so this is experiment number two measurements part two we're going to record mass time area and volume and uh, what you need for this experiment in order to record the mass we would need a metal disc rubber stopper 50 milliliter beaker salt and of course the spoon to take out the salt into the beaker for time we would need two concentrations of sodium bisulfite 0.4 and 0.2 and two concentrations of potassium iodate 1 and 0.5 and a start solution and one more thing to record the time we would need a stopwatch and the second part for time recording is um, how much time it takes in order to extinguish the candle so for that I have different um, you know capacities beaker 150 250 400 and um, 600 then I would need a container to dispose of my chemical waste we cannot just dispose of the chemical waste into the sink which is harmful for the environment so we would need a separate container and then we have a separate procedure to dispose of the chemical waste so this is the container so in order to record the mass measurements we have two techniques mass by difference and tearing before weighing so we're going to learn both the techniques in today's lab mass by difference is basically um, you're going to subtract the mass of the substance from the container and you will get the mass by difference mass by tearing is all the modern balances actually they have a tear function which automatically subtracts the mass of the container so you don't have to do the extra calculation for that actually balance itself does it so um, that's the thing then another thing is we should know how to handle those digital balances so the first thing is we should never pour liquids in a container on the balance so the correct way of doing is you pre-weigh the container or tear it remove it from the balance add your liquid and again weigh it then um, Another thing is you have to be very cautious when you are going to weigh the corrosive substances so that the corrosive substances should not actually um, um, fall on the um, balance pan. It can damage it. Third thing is always record all the digits present in the reading. So you're going to record all the digits into the reading. The last digit might fluctuate. So you are going to write uh, that um, you know um, reading where the last digit spends more time and another thing is never weigh hot container on the balance this may the heat may actually damage it damage the balance and another thing is you will never get the correct reading then do not tear a balance and walk away and then come back you know maybe other student is already um, you know waiting for you to uh, finish it and you already teared it but then other student will come and do it and go away and when you will come it's not no more tear so always when you tear it immediately you are supposed to wait and record the reading some of the things you must keep in mind for the balance you're gonna use often um, uh, you know balance uh, in this cam 120 course so if something let's say spilled over on the balance pan right so there are always a brush besides the balance you pick that brush and clean it nicely around the balance pan and if something comes um, around the balance make sure you're gonna clean that as well and put it in the uh, respective waste container Here I'm going to record the mass of, first of all, 50 milliliter beaker. You can note down the readings. Stopper. Stopper. 
metal disc. You can see the number on the metal disc is 21. Now we're going to uh, see the difference between mass by tearing and mass by difference. So I already recorded the mass of the beaker, right? Now I have added the salt just to barely cover the bottom of the beaker. And I'm going to weigh the beaker and the salt both. Now I have the same amount of salt, you can see, right? The same salt actually. I'm going to empty out the beaker, okay? And this time I'm going to place the beaker on the balance pan. And this time I'm going to use my tear function, right? So there is, it's already subtracted. The mass of the container is already subtracted by the tear function. Now I'm going to add this salt into the beaker and then wait again. So now this is the salt. I already added salt back to the beaker. Now this is a reading of the salt. So here you are going to record the mass of 50 milliliter beaker, mass of stopper, mass of disc, right? And then if you see this is estimated mass of salt. So when I added this salt into the beaker, you can see that you need to estimate it as you did in measurement part one. So estimation, right? So estimation shouldn't be very accurate. It's just that, you know, how much it, it should be. That's you are going to write down the number here to the nearest gram. So you are round it off to the gram. Then um, you are going to write here mass of salt plus beaker. So basically this is your mass of mass by difference. Mass of salt plus beaker. Here you already have the mass of 50 milliliter beaker. You're going to subtract both of them in order to get the mass of salt. And do write the calculations here. Then this is the mass, mass of the salt. This is you will when you will use the tear function. So that will come here. And then you will see that these two readings should be very close to each other and they should be within 0 0.003 grams. Now we are going to measure the time. In order to measure the time, we're going to do a chemical reaction, the iodine clock reaction. And um, we would need two reactants, sodium bisulfite and potassium iodine. So this time I'm going to pour out 10 milliliters of 1% potassium iodide and later we're going to use a different concentration. So always use safety um, gloves and safety goggles for this type of experiment because you are dealing with chemicals. About, right? So I'm just taking about 10 milliliters. I'm going to pour out in a test tube. Okay, so now I'm going to add 0.2% uh, sodium bisulfite. So I have the 10 milliliters of the sodium bisulfite. I'm going to pour it out into 50 milliliter beaker. I'm going to add 24 drops of starch solution into the beaker. Okay, so now I'm going to add the potassium iodate into the sodium bisulfite solution. It has a starch in it. And then once I add the potassium iodide, iodate into the potassium bisulfite, you would see the reaction. This time I have 1% potassium iodate into the test tube and 0.4% sodium bisulfite into the beaker. I'm gonna mix two again and I'm gonna time the reaction.
This time I have 1% potassium iodate into the test tube and 0.4% sodium bisulfite into the beaker. I'm gonna mix two again and I'm gonna time the reaction. So this is the another experiment we're gonna do for the time recording. And um, so you are going to record how much time does it take to extinguish the candle. We're gonna use the different capacity speaker to cover the uh, burning candle. So this is a 115 milliliter beaker. This is 250 milliliter beaker. This is 400 milliliter beaker. This is the last one, 600 milliliter beaker. So now you are going to do the area and volume of these geometrical figures. You would use, you would use a ruler for that. So um, in case of rectangle, you are going to record the width and height both. So width and height, right? Width and height. So that's the rectangle. You are going to record um, in centimeters as we learned in measurement part one. And then you are going to convert into millimeters here. And then you're gonna write the value in millimeters after just conversion. Similarly, you are going to record the measurements for triangle. So this is base and this is height. This is base and this is height. So you are going to record those uh, numbers here in case of width, I mean, uh, in case of base and the height and then convert into millimeters the way you did for rectangle. And then you are going to calculate the area. So area of rectangle is width multiplied by height. So you're gonna do width multiplied by height, centimeter, centimeter, you're gonna write it there. The unit of area is centimeter square. Then in millimeter, you would, when you will convert into millimeter, you're gonna pick millimeter, multiply millimeter with millimeter to get the area in millimeter. Similarly, in triangle, the area is half width multiplied by height. That's the formula for the area of triangle. So you already have the readings uh, here. You are gonna put it into the formula to get the area of the triangle, first of all in centimeter square and then in millimeter square. Then there are exactly dash millimeter and one centimeter. So we already learned in the lecture. Similarly, try to figure out there are exactly how many square millimeters in one square centimeter. Uh, now we're gonna record the volume. So we have three different figures here, three geometrical figures. This is cuboid, cube, and cylinder. Dimensions are already given. You don't have to measure them. And um, so basically, you're gonna just apply the formulas to calculate the volume. So volume of a rectangular solid, which is this one, is area multiplied by height, or you can say length multiplied by width multiplied by height. Everything is given here. You're gonna pick it from there. So this is your length, this is your width, and this is your, um, um, this is your height. So you're gonna use all of them to calculate the volume. Similarly, when it comes to the um, uh, square, um, you know, uh, solid, which is a cube, everything is same, length, width, and height. So like 3.02 multiplied by 3.02 multiplied by 3.02. And this will give you the volume of the cube. Then comes the volume of cylinder. So the formula is given here. Pi multiplied by radius square multiplied by height. 
height is here 4.55, radius is given 2.20 and value of pi is 22 divided by 7. So you are going to put the values of all those three in this table in centimeter cube because volume is recorded in centimeter cube. Convert into millimeter cube. Right? You don't have to measure in millimeter, but then you need to convert into millimeter cube. And then you're going to answer this question. There are exactly dash cubic millimeter in one cubic centimeter. Um, and then this one, um, in each figure, the value, of, the value of volume expressed in millimeter cube is dash times than that of the expressed in centimeter cube. So this, both the things, basically, when you will do your calculations, you should be able to answer it. Okay, so now comes the report part of experiment number two. You are going to record all the data into the report sheet, and then this report sheet you are, go you are going to turn in for the grading. In the report sheet, you are going to make the graph using the good graphing practices. The data you are going to use is from the time to extinguish a candle. And make sure when you will record the time, it should be, to the, it should be rounded off to the tenth of the second. And so what are the good graphing practices? First of all, there should be the title of the graph. You need to think about you know, what, what, what happened in the uh, extinguishing candle experiment, something like, you know, which should be um, appropriate for it. So you're gonna have the title of the graph, title of the axis, this is x-axis, this is y-axis, this is x-axis is called as the independent axis, independent variable. So you are going to write it here, volume, volume of the beaker right unit should be there and here in, on x-axis you are going to write time in seconds and then let's say uh, it's just a sample I just plotted some of the points uh, just for the sample okay so when you will plot make sure you would have the equal intervals on the x-axis same way the you know there should be equal intervals on the y-axis that is very important. So it should not be like if you are taking 0 here, 10 here, and then you are taking 12 here. So it should not be like that. It should be equal in x-axis and then equal on y-axis. Okay. Then these are the points which have plot plotted here. It's just a sample. Right? So you are not going to connect the dot by dot with the curved line. What you would do, you would pick a ruler, right? And you would basically starting from the origin you will make a line a straight line and which should pass which should pass through the maximum of the dots or which should be near to maximum of the dots right and then you will take it and then you will just make a line so this is basically called as the best fit line then this is just the last part of the report. You are going to have the um, you know data from the or calculations and everything from the area and volume. You're going to record it here and on this page, and then basically you are going to turn in everything in the everything for the grading. And that's all in this experiment number two.